So yes, we I've spoken a lot about consents and we've quite a bit about consents. Yeah. You mentioned decentralized consents. Can you can you tell us what you mean by decentralized consents? What so essentially what happened is that initially council was multiple district councils. Yeah. And then and they, they became more than super city? Uh, super city kind of thing and it's called a territorial authority so it took over all the district councils yep. and becomes like a one TA which is gonna be taking care of all sorts of consents within one umbrella yeah the whole idea was to sort of uniform give uniform processing and assessment to entirety of the super city which is Auckland yep. but now what, what has happened over a period of time is council has taken a uh, taken a very bullish uh, sort of approach to it because they are obviously monopolizing in approving consents. They're the only authority that can approve Correct. No, the only other, uh, I'll correct you there, Andy. There's another uh, agency called PMC. Consent. PMC. Yeah. So they're based in Botany. Oh, yeah. So they they are also an approved authority by BC, by, by Ministry of Business to perform these building consent assessment. But that they, that's it. That's the only one. Uh, apart from that, council pretty much takes care of all the consent that goes through or design work that goes through Auckland. Uh, within the Auckland region, you know. So, but what happens, it creates a huge bottleneck of getting stuck in that governmental sort of behavior attitude. The bureaucratic process. You know? Bureaucratic process and all sorts of ritualism, ego clashes and all that stuff. And then it doesn't really funnel out from the other end, you know. And, but whereas you look at case studies from different countries, there are other agencies which are technically qualified enough and recognized by their provincial authorities to 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 do these kind of work as well. So to approve consent, you mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. So Australia follows similar similar guideline where because Australia is quite big, so they have province different provinces and different provinces have different councils, but they also have private authority, private companies who are you can hire directly. You don't even need to talk to the main authority and you say, hey, look, you're gonna. I'm going to do 15 uh, jobs this year. So you become my, uh, you know, consenting. So, so this is like I said earlier, ra- rather than you going to the council, council not knowing where to allocate the job, they allocate it over us. Yeah. You go directly to Opus and say, hey, you are approved by Auckland Council. Why don't you approve a consent for me? Got it. Got it. Right. And that makes it very easy for everyone because the, 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 the work... Now, I mean, let's talk about liability. Very okay. So I understand the concept of decentralization, which is cool. And I appreciate that. Yeah. I don't know what happens overseas. I'm not yeah. well versed in what happens in Australia, yeah. but okay. So now Auckland Council takes all that. Uh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Which means the taxpayer takes all that. Yeah. Cool. cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, what would happen when Opus approve a design or whoever? Okay, it could be a county like Opus. Uh, yes, I. What happens to that instance? Where does the line sit? So I give an example. So there are insurance for everything. You have insurance for losing your shoe, losing your dog, losing everything. So similarly, BBC, for instance, is a clear example for us who have a public liability insurance similar to Thompson as well. I have public liability, you have public liability. Everyone. So, so, so it's just how you customize that particular liability within that framework that allows for a better sort of liability share. And I don't I would say that would be a better outcome because people will be more careful. You know, if you if you deal with PPC ever, they actually process your consent in less than quality dates. They do all the time. The only difference have you dealt with them directly? Yeah, yeah, I know them very well. And uh, we have a good working relationship. Another thing is good working that people who have been working in the industry for ten years, twelve years, yeah. they're by an industry people, right? Yeah. So they should be given some sort of form of credit that these guys are doing it got a proven record, they, they share the liability, so why don't you give them a little bit? So what, what do you think Auckland Council needs to to make this happen? See, Council will not do shit about it because they get all the money. So it is about Ministry of Business who has to really work on it. So it's down to the politics of how... But, but okay, so so let's say hypothetically, right? The, the councils make it all the money, which is great. Yeah, they okay, cool. Okay, don't really care. But what I really do care about is slowing down the process of building. And in turn, it's less return on investment for an investor. Absolutely. So that investment is now not appealing anymore. Like you said, <laughs> they're taking the creativity out of the now. And yeah. But it yeah. takes shit lot longer. Uh, yeah. Right. Why Why would I buy a piece of land and develop it? In, in my rights, <laughs> why would I do it? To be honest, this is a question that has been popping up a lot. With, my, with the interest rates <laughs> and then what it is, yeah. it's crazy. Yeah. I'll give you an example of a recent case we did in Conifer Grove, 
I, I know we're going for growth, yeah. So that's yeah. the Biden and Veolia, uh, sort of. So Veolia is the third party agency for water, care, water supply over there. And so we, we only proposed three more new houses in that particular property. Everything got approved. Council is totally happy. Now they're asking us to upgrade a water mains line of up to half a kilometer for us to get approval for three houses. So they yeah. allowed us to upgrade the entire line on client's cost. You know how much the court came up to upgrade that? $600,000. Yeah, I said 500, but you're 600. 600, yeah. So, but technically speaking, there is doing three houses. So, how much load will that put on the entirety of the line? So, we have been negotiating and offering them a deal that we are happy to pay money to share that particular piece of water means upgrade and stuff. Well, why is it the, with the landowner's responsibility to upgrade? Well, they are common in. You know, in 2016, when the new AUB was kicked in, they 2017 this because council, hang on, how will we make the money? So they started this new thing called development contribution, which was already there, but initially it was oh, it was like pennies. Now it's like a huge uh, chunk of money that which I call white mafia. We wait in a way. White mafia. Yeah, it's purely a white mafia. They don't give any value, mother. Pretty much, it's a it's a white collared mafia. It's like right. I, when you're building the house, you give me hundred grand for it. It's literally like that because every time you have wow. okay, really. So 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 that is the the house owner actually contributing for to the to the network of the, to the network for infrastructure upgrade. Correct. So the council had published that again when they, when I say published, it was not a public document. It was a private. They just upgraded their documentation within you know the the the, the legislative authorities. And they raised the bars. They said, hey, look, everyone is trying to build houses. We want to charge them more. So that's why I called White Mafia because they upgraded the rates without anyone's consultation. So again, they are raising the rates to that. So this particular case that we are doing, for three houses, the development contribution came out to be $135,000. Just so now, put that, that's an awkward council scenario. Now, now come back to your decentralization, right? Okay. Yeah. Decentralized consent. Correct. What would happen if you'd had to go to PCB to approve that consent and not to Auckland Council? What different outcome do you reckon you would have got? It's it's faster. It's more... Big. No, no, no. From that cost perspective. So Auckland Council said, now you got to fund a certain amount of money to upgrade a water main, six dollars grand. Sure. Okay. See, do you well, reckon it would have been a different outcome if you if you, if it gone with decentralized authority? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because uh, there are uh, there is some form of empathy that you understand that the scale of the project that you do has to contribute to the to the public works. You know what I mean? You can't expect a guy who's doing three houses. So particular that particular instance, there was another development down the street or like 54 houses. So it means that the proportion of the development is quite different. You know what I mean? So when you know 54, 55 houses, upgrading a water main makes sense because you know, the, the amount you got to take. Correct. And because they got the approval first, we are subjected to now do that instead of them, you know, and so so that's a that's a bureaucratic and rhetorical, you know, that uh, that comes in and says, hey, look, you know, you guys are doing it, you're doing fifty four, we are doing three, and still we have to you know contribute a major, major chunk of it. Doesn't make sense, right? But uh, I believe decentralization might start creating other issues that we are foreseeing right now, but in, potentially. Correct, yeah. but it creates a competitive edge, doesn't it? They, 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 they actually going to start working for your money. Correct, yeah. correct. And, and, and you're not only going to one authority to actually get Correct. Then the authority will behave better because they know that the business is going. Eventually, it's, everything is about business. Council, yeah. and council is all about business. Yeah. So so when you talk about business, they don't want to lose any of their business, right? Even at cost, if even at the people who are doing the work, who are doing all the hard yard, they suffer a lot, but they don't want to lose any of the penny that goes out in the market. Yeah, this is a really interesting conversation. I could probably go off for another hour about this, but I'm going to cut you there. Yeah, that's right. That's right. You both can actually. Yeah, yeah. Very interesting.